Hi friends. So today I'm going to discuss on popular request the topic about how to go from a PhD or a postdoc position to an industry job. And this topic is important because there are a lot of people who apply for postdocs and even faculty positions and then there are actually a very few positions out there. So if you typically look at the grant money for postdocs these grant monies are in millions of dollars and so on at the best and also there are a limited number of universities around the world but if you look at the companies which are out there you are talking about billions of dollars you are talking about market capitalization of trillion dollars sometime and so on so the possibilities of using your skills in the company domain is much larger than of using these skills in the university or research lab type of system so let's look into some of the aspects which differentiate the university world from the industry world and let's see how you can break out from your PhD into the industry. So the number one thing about how to get into company system is you need to create a resume and this is different from a CV. So as most of you know a CV essentially involves telling people where your degrees are from what are some of the prizes and awards you have got and essentially the list of publications. Now it is expected that people figure out from your list of publications as to what are your projects or problems which you have done during your research. So most university people are familiar with this, they produce your thesis title, they go through your list of publication and the titles of all the papers and they basically can figure out what you have done and if they are interested they will go more into the web system into Google Scholar and read your abstracts and if they want they can read your publication. Now the companies don't work like that. In the case of companies you need to give your resume and you need to exactly tell what are the projects you have done and typically company people don't publish papers at the best they may write some patents or file some patents but most people do not do that also so essentially company people work on projects so if you think about it your PhD also involves a project you probably did a project as part of your PhD funded by some government body or some private company and essentially you now need to think of your PhD as a project and break it down into projects so that's what companies like to see now typically resumes are long they are uh, summary of what you have done it's basically the story of your life that's what curriculum vitae means now as far as a resume is concerned it's more of a summary of the projects you have done and the skills you have acquired through these projects so essentially most of the companies nowadays use some kind of software to go through resumes so they are going to look at various keywords in the resume so maybe they are looking at optimization machine learning c++ python pandas marketing business different type of management software statistical analysis and so on so these all should be there in your resumes and the companies are essentially very much skill focused they don't really care about publications and so on but if you have a few publications you can put that at the end of your resume typical resume should be one to two pages if you are a PhD you can probably go with two pages don't exceed two pages even if you are a very senior candidate for a CV there's typically no limit but new PhDs or postdocs typically have CVs from two to five pages and senior faculty may have CVs of 50 pages and so on but even if senior faculty are there they don't need to list out all their publications they can give a link to Google Scholar and people can see all their publications right there so that's the number one thing to keep in mind it's papers versus projects so whereas universities are paper centric companies are project centric and you need to convert your mindset from paper mode to project mode now the next thing let us look at is how companies communicate information so they mostly communicate information through meetings and essentially you are going to find a lot of meetings taking place you have to talk to a lot of people this may be in zoom this may be face to face and so on and you are going to have to make powerpoint presentations to facilitate your talking because it's hard to communicate concepts only by talking to people so 
PowerPoint presentations play a huge role here. Now in contrast, as far as universities are concerned, most of the communication takes place through writing. So you may have PowerPoint presentations at certain points like in conference papers or in presenting to your PhD research committee or your final PhD defense, but the real work which is communicated is through either written papers or it is through your written thesis and so on. So writing is very important in university system and presentation is very important in the company system. So this is very important because very often people who are coming out of PhD programs may be more into writing but after some time they can figure out how to get better at presentation and this is another reason when you are in a university to make sure you present your papers in conferences and so on because that will improve your communication skills and your soft skills. Now in a university setting you will typically be doing prototyping programming and so on in MATLAB and MATLAB is very dominant in the universities but when you go to any company you will find that they are using Python or Excel or any of these tools. So very often in companies they will have access to MS Office. So most companies will have Microsoft Office out there and therefore they can use this particular software. So they like to use PowerPoint, they like to use Excel, they like to use Microsoft Word and uh, some of these softwares. Now the next point is that in a typical university you are more interested in concepts. So very often when you create a certain concept you write a paper, you may create some toy examples to demonstrate this concept and then you are done. Your paper is published. However, in the case of a company, you have to actually go further and implement this concept. And at this time, two issues come in. One is the issue of scale because many of the problems which are okay in toy problem situations, maybe you have 10 variables, 20 variables, 100 variables, become difficult to handle when you have thousand variables, one million variables and so on. So all these issues where you have a large amount of data, so it is known as big data or you have the need for very fast computing become very important in company settings. So concept by itself will not cut it, you now need to actually figure out how you can implement the concept and take care of all the practical issues which are out there. Next uh, issue is the time scale. Typically when you are working in a university, you are thinking in terms of weeks, months, six months and so on. So you may submit an abstract of a paper to a conference and you may hear about it three months down the road. You may present the paper six months down the road and so on. But as far as industry is concerned, people expect you to have a solution within the next week, maximum two weeks, certainly at a quarter level. So quarter to quarter is the way the industry lives and therefore if you have been working in a university, you need to increase your speed as far as the research time scale is concerned. Now this may sometimes mean that you may not delve into a problem to a very deep level, you may not write a very nice paper and so on because here the aim is not to write this nice paper but simply to actually practically implement the concept, make it into some kind of hardware or software and then move on for the next quarter. Finally, in a university setting, you have, I would say, a lax management style. If you are a PhD student, your supervisor may be there. He may or may not meet you regularly. Certainly, if you are a faculty, you are pretty much on your own. Your department chair will just every now and then check on you to see if you are publishing papers and so on. But if you are in a company, you will have a manager. If you are a manager, you will have a VP. If you are a VP, you will have some CEO type person to whom you report. So in this case, the monitoring is much more close. So one of the good points about this, of this is that the manager will tell you exactly what you need to do. So it's not like in the university where you have to sometime work in a vacuum type of situation and figure out things on your own. The negative side is sometime you may have a lot of um, feedback coming from the management all the time. So you may have to kind of spend a lot of time to explain to them what exactly you are doing, how it is helping the business case of the company and so on. So these are some of the factors to keep in mind whenever you are applying for the industry job. Now like I mentioned before, 
postdoc positions and all are very limited so it's very likely that a large number of phd students are going to have to take industry jobs industry jobs are nowadays much more amenable to PhD students so there are a lot of companies which see the value of PhD because PhDs bring in a lot of research insight a lot of training in terms of writing and presentation into their thinking and so some of these are very useful so always remember whenever you are a PhD student don't shy away from practicality don't shy away from actually implementing your ideas in terms of computer code or in developing actual hardware and these things will be very important if you want to quickly transition from PhD to the company system. So if you look around yourself, you will find that engineering students have the simplest time in this transition because they are in general working very closely with industry type of topic. Then the science students are there and it's more hard for humanities and social science students. But even these students, if they are well versed in statistics, if they are knowledgeable about Python, if they have good social skills soft skills presentation skills can break out into the industry system because there are a lot of need for social science type people in the user experience type of jobs and many such jobs so i hope this video is useful to you stay tuned to my channel for more such videos excuse the planes which have flown around today i can't do much about that i will see you soon in a new video see you soon